on this week's Glanbia Ireland Dairy Focus podcast. We'll hear part five in the Lameness series with our own vet, Yara Summers. And then we'll also talk about current grassland management tips and advice and looking forward to winter 2020. Now we'll hear from Yara Summers in part five of the Lameness series. Hi, and welcome to the final part in our Lameness series. Today we will focus on roadways. And roadways play an important part in lameness control and lameness development on farm. Now, good roadways really have a, a few key roles to play and they should provide the best possible access to the largest area of the grazing platform as possible. They should improve cow flow and cow movements uh, around the place. They should form a comfortable area, comfortable surface for cows to travel on to and from the partner. Um, they should also reduce the amount of poaching that is caused by cows walking through fields. They should minimize the damage caused by stones um, to cows' feet, so prevent lameness in that sense. But also, good roadways will improve other cleanliness and thus play a role in controlling mastitis. What's not mentioned as one of the key roles of a roadway is actually the use of machinery. And if for your farm, the roadways are gonna be used by both cows and heavy machinery, that needs to be built into the design. So they need to be dual purpose roadways. Otherwise, you will end up with situations like this here where tractor tracks are formed on the cows roadways. And these tractor tracks are uh, really good at collecting water and loose stones. Of the six key roles that a, that a roadway has to play, three of those actually deal directly with lameness. And they can be achieved by designing well-drained, well-managed roadways that are free from loose stones and potholes, such as this here, um, this decent roadway. One of the key aspects in cow flow is the width of the roadway. And for herds below 100 cow uh, number, three meters is the minimum width of a roadway. This here now is a picture of a roadway that is actually too narrow, right? It's too narrow for this herd. It, it's probably too narrow for any herd. If the herd goes above 100 cows, you really should add on another meter. So you're talking about four meters in width. And that goes up to for cow herds of about 200 cows. Once you go over 200, once you reach 300 cows in your herd, you probably should be looking at five meters in width. And why is this important? Is that cows need space to rearrange their position in the herd. See, the, the order in which cows come out of a paddock is very different from the order in which cows are milked. So cows need a chance to rearrange themselves while they're walking towards the parlor. And that requires cows, faster cows, overtaking slower cows. And by making the roadway wide enough, you can prevent cows having to push and shove just to get ahead. What plays a key role in the width of the roadway is actually the position of the fencing along the edges of the roadway. So ideally, even though this, is, this roadway is too narrow, the, the, the fences are actually placed quite well because they're placed at least 30 to 50 centimeters away from the edge of the roadway. So the cows aren't being squeezed onto the roadway. They have a bit of freedom. They're not afraid of running into the fence. Another example here of a nice and wide roadway, which has the fences well placed away from the edge of the roadway. And also this, this roadway is, is well raised above the field next to it. Another key aspect of roadways that you want to avoid is bottlenecks, sharp bends, and objects or other distractions that will prevent cow flow. So here are two examples of very sharp 90 degrees bends that will really slow down cow flow. An example of a, a fairly severe bottleneck is this one here where the roadway is actually very wide and then all of a sudden funnels into a fairly narrow roadway and it's still a good bit to go uh, to, to, to the pasture from there. Um, this here is an example of cows 
that have to squeeze through a gateway leaving the yard. And not only is that a huge bottleneck, right next to the bottleneck is a huge water trough, which inevitably cows are going to stop at to drink, causing even more obstruction of cows wanting to get out to graze. An example of an obstruction or a distraction would be uh, the picture here where there is a drain in the middle of the gateway that cows have to cross every time they come into the yard and leave the yard again. So maybe four times a day. The roadway gradient is also important to consider. It's important to consider from the point of the top surface. So cows will comfortably walk up an eight to 10 degree slope. And even if that's on a loose surface, once you go over that um, steepness, you wanna be considering maybe concrete as the surface. And as a maximum slope, you really should consider a three to one ratio uh, in steepness. Now, concrete can work um, for steeper slopes, but slippery concrete is a huge risk. So if you're using concrete, you want to be either grooving it, like here in the picture here, or you want to use roughened concrete like this example here, which is a, a, a nice roadway going up the slope and the cows have plenty of grip on this. Alternatively, if a slope can't be managed, steps are a good solution. Now these are fairly short steps up, but they work fine. Um, this is at a parlor exit going into the passageway and then heading out of, of the shed. Or another example of wider steps coming out of the parlor again, but stepping down is this one here uh, on the outside of the dairy. And cows really like steps, so that, that, that's never an issue for them. Talking about slopes, if you don't have a sloping roadway, you obviously want to avoid water collecting on the roadway. So a crossfall or a camber will be needed. For roadways up to about four meters in width, a crossfall can be used. And you're looking at a 5% crossfall, so a 20 to one ratio um, across the road and for the full length of the roadway where it's level. Once you go over the four meters in width, you're looking at a, a nice, well-rounded camber that runs the full length of the roadway. And you're looking at about three to 6% in camber um, that, that, you, you, that you find. Obviously, crossfall or camber alone isn't enough to drain the water off the roadways. As you can see in this picture here, if the roadway is too low lying, even though it might run off, the water might run off the middle of the roadway, it's just gonna collect on the edges. So you really want the roadway to be raised up above the fields next to it, like in this example here, for example, right? Now, if that's not possible, if it's not possible to raise your roadway up above the field, then digging a drain will be necessary. For example, this one here, where this is a, a reasonably old drain, but it works well, but the roadway is lying well below the pasture next, next to it. Or in this example, where a new roadway was put in, that is, again, well below the level of the paddock. So a good drain was dug next to the roadway. For bends or dips in the roadway that are um, prone to collecting water, it might be worth considering digging a cross drain channel just to let the water run off in those uh, collecting points. Now, what do you build the roadway out of? In general, you use a hardcore base material, which is then topped with two, three inches of a finely ground material. And that could be crushed shale, it could be stone dust, anything really that you can get your hands on that is stone free, okay? So if we look at this example here, which is a mock-up of a roadway um, that was on, on display in, in Moore Park last year, you can clearly see the bigger stones of the hardcore base and then the fine dust material that is compacted on top of that. Or in this example of a, new, a newly laid roadway, for example, that's what you, what you see. Nice and wide, a nice camber 
a drain on one side, above the field on the other side, and a fine material as a top layer. However, over time, roadways will wear down and you end up with roadways like the two here, two examples here, where the hardcore base material is starting to show through the top layer. These roadways will need a new dressing of a fine material. If this is left as is now, you will end up with situations like this, where the hardcore base material is really starting to poke through and even come loose. And you get these big stones on the roadways that are huge hazards for cows. So by putting on a new top layer, those roadways can be used very well for a very long time. Thank you for watching the Lameness series, and I hope you found it very useful. This week, we're going to talk about some grassland management advice and current growth rates being experienced on farm across the region. And then we're going to look forward to winter 2020, looking at pasture-based Ireland data over the last seven days. Average grass growth rates nationally are about 18 kilos higher than national demand. And if we take some of those average figures, average grass growth rates being achieved in the Leinster region are currently 74 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day and 72 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day as an average for the Munster region. If we look at some of our Glanbia Chagas open source monitor herds, we've seen growth rates of in excess of 100 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day in some of those herds. So quality and, and keeping quality in front of the graze and mob is the key priority at the moment. Some targets to, to adhere to is your cover per cow of 160 to 180 kilos of dry matter per livestock unit, turning cows into that pre-graze and target height of 12 to 1400, hitting residuals of four centimetres and ensuring that we have an 18 to 20 day rotation length on the platform. If we're going to exceed these, these um, targets or where we're continuously exceeding these targets, quality on the platform will be compromised and have a direct effect on milk pr production or kilos of milk solids output per cow per day. If we look at national figures and we look at national growth rates being on average 18 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day ahead of national demand obviously there'll be an accumulation of surplus grass where you're taking out surplus paddocks ideally take out your poorest quality paddocks and then again we want to build up that reserve of surplus bales that may have been depleted over the last number of weeks while keeping quality ahead of the grazing mob when we talk about surplus silage and building back up reserves, now is typically the time where we should sit down and see where we stand in regards to winter forage reserves or what winter forage we have available in the yard. A lot of stocks had been depleted over the last couple of weeks when we've been feeding out surplus bales or silage when we were in a grass deficit. And also some first cuts were back on quantity and some second cuts were grazed in some scenarios. So it's a good time to sit down and put a plan in place for what your winter forage requirement might be. When it comes to feed budgeting, and a lot of us would have come across feed budgeting in 2018, when it comes to that creating a budget, I suppose the first place to start would be measuring what exactly is in the pit. If we're talking about pit, you want to step it out in foot, length by width by height, and then divide it by 45 to find out exactly what tons of grass silage you have available in the pit. Once we know what's in the yard, the next port of call is calculating your requirement at this point. When we talk about the requirement, we want to make sure that you're calculating for a realistic winter period. This might depend on what your location, geography, topography, land type, and a realistic turnout date or turn in date. Obviously, this will be very weather dependent, and weather might not be favourable in the back end of the year or early next spring. So again, allow for that buffer in case things do go wrong. It's also important then at this point that you know what stock numbers you have and what stock numbers you will be carrying over that winter period. And be they different types of stock, such as dairy cows, replacement heifers, yearlings, beef stock, etc. Different types of stock will have a different silage requirement over the winter period. But some typical figures to have to hand as an estimation on what your requirement might be. Your typical dairy cow on a monthly basis for standard pit silage dry matter percentage would be 1.6 tonnes per month. 
your in-calf heifers would have a typical requirement of 1.3 tons per month over the winter period and your your young stock or your yearling heifers then with a requirement of 0.7 ton of silage per month over that winter period once we know exactly what's available in the yard in the form of grass silage and once we know what our typical winter requirement may be once we subtract these two figures we should be able to see what deficit or gap needs to be filled over the next few weeks and months in order to fill that winter requirement it's good to have this target in mind over the next few weeks and months so we know exactly what the aim is in order to have a full silage requirement for a winter period. That, that deficit or gap might be quite large in some scenarios and some alternative strategies may need to be looked at or inquired about. But again, we want to make sure that that plan is in place early in order to prepare us as best as possible for winter 2020. For more information on any of the topics discussed in this week's Glanbia Ireland Dairy Focus podcast, contact your local Glanbia representative or log on to glanbiaconnect.com.